Hi, Gareth Summers here again with another video for you actors on Stanislavski and his system. Today I'm looking at the first two chapters which deal with attitudes of the actor. In these first few pages Stanislavski describes the problems encountered by actors if they bring an attitude of amateurism to their work, the mistakes that beginners usually make. My intention here is to help you actors practically engage with this work, so I'm just going to draw out some of the key lessons that Stanislavski wants us to learn here. This intro is very important because the chapters Amateurism and Stock in Trade and Art identify a series of key issues that the rest of the book strives to solve. So let's move on and see what those issues are. Don't just go with your first assumptions uh, about the part and bend your performance to them. When the student Kostya chooses uh, Othello, his only source for his characterization is his own unquestioned notion of what Othello is. It does not refer either to the text or to real life. Consequently, he works on exterior effects to create uh, the characterization. He creates an image which is really based only on pre-existing stereotypes and it's reductive to a point that Othello's humanity as an individual is reduced to uh, what we would now think of as a racist caricature. So this is the first lesson Stanislavski wants us to learn, um, that we need to be rigorous in our approach, particularly in the starting point of our research. Kostya does not initially go to any of the three necessary points to gain material for his research. The first being the text, which is clearly the most important. The second, the facts of the world that pertain to the text. And the last is the actor's own human experience. When Kostya starts working in the theatre space, he becomes frustrated. His stereotypical ideas don't work, uh, and he blames the words, and he thinks that they get in the way of his performance. He's trying to justify the words to fit his unresearched ideas, rather than see that the lack of facility he has with the words are an indication he's gone along the wrong path. It means his ideas are incorrect, He's made some error in his research, and he fails to use this as a lever to reinvestigate his assumptions, so he starts to flounder. Uh, and the lesson here will be given by Stanislavski as he talks about given circumstances and uh, proper research. The next lesson that Kostya has to learn is about a working ethic. For his first formal lesson, he's late for his class. Rachmanov, the assistant, cancels the class as an example to instill the need in the cohort to have responsibility for the work and respect for one's colleagues. He uses the metaphor of the army, and indeed the rigour of actor training and the demands of the life of an actor do require this intense commitment to responsibility and discipline. So it's not simply about you in isolation as an actor, it is about how you engage with the work, how you engage with everyone else. Every part of this process is part of your practice. In, a way, in the way that Zen students are perhaps asked to really pay attention to every detail of their, of their work, so should an actor. So the kind of meticulousness that is needed to pick through a text is also reliant on the kind of rigour in somebody who rebels against their own laziness and is there and responsible for the partner. The other thing is nobody wants to work with somebody who isn't reliable. The job is hard enough, so make sure that you are that reliable person. The next lesson here is uh, related to the previous one, and it is about awareness, ego, and self-control. Now, these are three areas that uh, actors need to train, and they form important threads that run through Stanislavski's work. Kostya's lack of preparation leads to frustration. The result is he realised that he started too quickly on his assumptions, and now he feels his imagination has dried up. He trusts to some magic, that this time doesn't come, and his attention is completely sucked out by the dark auditorium and the lights. He takes out his frustration quite rudely on the prompter, who is giving him uh, line cues, and who, in his own egotistic, psychologic mess, he starts to feel that is, uh, is just getting in the way of his work. It's a lack of focus, it's a lack of control here. He's standing on tiptoe, he's not grounded, and he's not playing the scenes in character. He's an actor who becomes obsessed with the audience and is trying to do a job to entertain. He becomes anxious, tension takes over, he panics, rushes his lines and forgets them. Of course, when this happens, the prompter ignores him in revenge and he doesn't help. So ego and lack of focus lead to thoughts about oneself. We call this anxiety. 
It's thinking about the future. If you're thinking about what's just about to go wrong, or you're thinking about what's just went wrong, or you're thinking about how you're doing it, you ain't playing the character. You're absolutely an actor worrying about actor's problem. So these things detract from playing and will cause tension and anxiety. Secondly, it's very important to be kind and considerate to one's colleagues and other workers in the theatre or on the film set. No one wants to work with a dick, so don't be one. Okay, so the next lesson is proper practice. Leo, his friend, talks in great detail about Othello's dilemma and pain and his struggle and his relationship with Desdemona and suddenly Costia starts properly to empathise with the character. Rather than thinking about these stereotypical images of an African man that he's never encountered in his life, he starts to think about the humanity and the specific situation of Othello's life. He begins to properly empathise and genuine humanity emerges in his work. It's a little late, in fact it's way too late, to affect the whole performance, but the effect of proper textual analysis, even this small amount, and proper understanding of the character is radical. When his friend leaves, he tries the lines again and weeps. He begins to see Desdemona with the character's love, jealousy and insecurities. He starts to become involved in the dilemmas of acting. He relaxes on stage at one point in rehearsal when he picks up some dropped nails and he gets so involved in picking up the nails that he forgets his anxiety. So there are a couple of things that uh, Stanislavski's flagging up for later lessons that we'll go into. He's saying, be attentive to the given circumstances, which we will talk about later. Be attentive to the circumstances of the text, of the real needs of the character. He's saying, get involved in a specific task. Don't generalise. The task of picking up the nails is very specific, and so it leads us later into the idea of units and objectives, and your task is no longer to entertain the audience, but to just engage with this specific activity. So this is the essence of action, activity, objective, and given circumstances, as Kostya, in his initial dilettantism, flounders around looking for ways of working. These little moments of inspiration come from practices that Stanislavski has noticed and later will build into his system. A moment of truth. Kostya's unfocused preparation and lack of physical or vocal training leads to a series of problems in performance. He's not steeped in the world or real experience of the character, as we said, uh, and his unjustified actions are disrupted by his awareness of the stage. His body is overcome with tension. He feels stiff. He's ungainly. The nerves and mental noise that this instigates places him in a situation where his voice and body do not feel under control. They are, as we have said, undisciplined, as is his inability to relax into the work and keep his mind focused on the role and its demands. He's thinking about himself and he's not thinking through the character's eyes. And so he's not producing a watchable performance. He becomes frustrated and lost and this feeling connects with the small amount of research he's done through his friend Leo. And suddenly he connects with the dilemma of the character and in genuine anguish produces a powerful and magnetic moment on the stage, on the line, blood, Iago, blood. This is not, as some interpret, effective because it is emotional. It is because it is correct. For this brief moment, it is unforced and the life of the character takes over. In this moment, he is flying and feels liberated and is somehow in a trance. Now, chapter two acts as a kind of summarising force for the previous chapter and a basis from which the rest of the work will uh, be built. The rest of the book after this is exercise after exercise, and essentially it's in response to the lessons learnt in the chapter Amateurism. Tortsov, the Stanislavski character, describes the brief moment of Kostya's success as a moment of experiencing. He explains that by becoming steeped in the real dilemma, the physical and vocal symptoms of the character's pain emerged organically from the right form of attention, the right form of attention. He operated subconsciously, which is good, he says, if it leads along the right path, um, but not if it takes you along the wrong route. So clearly, just opening up to um, 
the subconscious or the subterranean feelings and emotions in the body is not good enough unless it's trained along the right path is not entrained by the given circumstances, he will say later, of the scene and the circumstances of the character. So he equates his brief moment of success with beauty, really for Stanislavski, uh, in a Tolstoyan way, or maybe a Platonic way, he is saying that beauty is truth, or, or rather, truth is beauty. Truth for Stanislavski and beauty for Stanislavski is an accurate embodiment of the way people really behave and interact under the pressures provided by the texts, conditions and relationships. He says it's best when an actor is taken over by a role without noticing how he or she is feeling or what he or she is doing. So everything emerges spontaneously, or as you will later say, organically. This presents the problem that the sub conscious, somatic, emotional impulses emerge only indirectly, so one has to create the conditions to let them emerge naturally. Now, it is true that since Stanislavski's work, there has been a lot of research on how to um, produce these subconscious, these emotional, these somatic responses directly from the body, and they can be very effective, but they still need the training and the framing of the research into the text and of the character. Because just as Stanislavski says at the beginning of the chapter, if you engage with your subconscious processes, but they don't serve the play, they have no function, they have no reality. So you can go to all sorts of extreme states, but it doesn't mean anything unless you are really engaging with the truth of the character, not within a naturalistic uh, context, which is the majority of our work. So nature he says, holds the key. The attitude to nature is the bedrock of the whole system. Conscious work, thinking, analytical, logical thinking, eventually arouses the instincts. It is also true that much of the work is psychophysical, somatic, um, when you are training, in training your sensitivity to, to allow things to emerge. Because there's no point in just working on the conscious level and then staying there. You have to have these two systems working cooperatively. The effect of the system is to look at one and then the other, one and then the other, until the two start to emerge. And that is the proper way to be working. Extreme emotion is not the goal. It may be a byproduct of some characters. And certainly, if you're playing a great epic character, they do go to extreme states. Extreme things happen to them. But also, you may be playing someone who is playing very subtle. So the goal is playing credibly. Credible playing means thinking, wanting, striving, truthfully, Stanislavski says, in logical sequence, in a human way, within the character, and in complete parallel to it. So... There's a part of you that is absolutely subsumed by the character, and there is a part that's working uh, parallel, that is your material, your awareness, that is feeding in and out of this process. When this is achieved, the actor will come close to the role and begin to experience it, bringing the inner life of the character and the external appearance of the character together. He says one brings one's own inner feelings to the role. But of course, this is always tempered and adjusted in relation to the demands of the role itself. And to, uh, to finish this little section, I'll give you the quote that he gives of the great actor Salvini, who was Stanislavski's great inspiration. Every great actor should feel, really feel, what he is portraying, more or less, at every performance. So, these first two chapters raise a whole series of issues about ethics, about focus, about detail, about approaches to work, and then finish with a general coverall statement about the access of the subconscious via the conscious and the call not to just reproduce a whole series of uh, stock in trade ideas and stereotypes, but to investigate the humanity of that individual character. Don't go to the obvious, go to the in-obvious 
truth. Thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe or leave me any comments or questions. The rest of these videos will deal in individually with a different exercise from the Stanislavski system and give you an opportunity at home to work on those exercises or to share them with uh, friends or in, 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 your, in your working process. And uh, my intention is to look rigorously at the Stanislavski system and to present you with those exercises, but also to inform them with current thinking and more contemporary approaches to some of these uh, problems that Stanislavski identifies. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. <laughs>